It's a promo, yeah, yeah, bad, 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 bad. Yo. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bay Ridge Boys presents the History Hyenas. I'm Chris Stefano, aka Chrissy TBP, True Blue Psycho TBG, True Blue Gay, but suck a dick since 1984. And I'm Giannis Pappas, aka Freddy Fetiche. That's it. That's that kid, fucking. <laughs> Olive oil, baby. That's Yo, right. Yo, today we got a good episode. Olive oil tits. Yeah, olive oil tits. Cause... And I'm a cute kid. Suzuki tits. Yo, today you told me unequivocally that I was cuck 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 cute. Yo. <laughs> yeah, guys, send us your videos of you of you know moving your arm like you're on a choo choo train going cuck 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 Send us your vids. Send your vids to brb.patreon.gmail.com or just DM us like Rafael DeLuca and Jen Bacacus do at Chris D Comedy or at Giannis Poppins or at Bay Ridge Boy. I'll tell you what. There was a History Hyenas pre Zach shaving his beard and a History Hyenas post. I mean, he's a different guy. Yeah, Zach's a different guy. We said it last week. He looks like a Mexican kid that fixes cars outside Shea Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Or a kid that left the caliphate and is trying to reform his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we got Sleepy Bardos here today. Yeah. Bar it's 117 degrees in New York City, and the wasps can't take that. The wasps can't no, take that. No, they're not bred for heat. No, not bred for heat. They, they like to stay in Connecticut or, or you know, northern England by yeah. the sea. Their genes are not made for this at all. No, they can't do the heat. That's that why they don't have fumes. Absolutely. Because they don't sweat down there because they're used to cold weather. That's my theory. Yeah. That's why there's no fumes down there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I don't even know if they have genitalia. I don't think Bardo has genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it's just like a naked Ken doll? It's just a hole. It's just a schmear? Yeah, it's like a cappuccino machine. It just <laughs> it just make a little a, 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 a little wash. Yo, get fucking... Is tra why, is, uh, why, is hyena the, why is HTM Hyena the Trash Monkey all the way over there? He's watching over the clan. Oh, okay, he's watching over the clan. Yeah, and it's, and it's also he's got to stay in the AC. Yo, cuz. Yeah. Are you autistic? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah, I'm Bipolar, on the spectrum. Yo, you're on the spectrum because the way you do acronyms, you have to do that. And they're like, are you counting I letters? To, yeah. yeah. Yeah, from now on, call me Chrissy to Spectrum. No. Yeah, you need to yeah. be leashed up and taken off the streets. Yeah, shot in the back of the head in Poughkeepsie. That's what it needs to happen, cuz. Yeah, cuz. Yeah, I've been on a fucking roll today. Cuz. Yeah. I you had, had a coffee this morning and I, you haven't been the same since. I met you for a call. I met you for a Norwegian coffee on 3rd Avenue at Cafe. At Cafe. Cafe. On 3rd Avenue and 81st Street in B -B 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 Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. We love that spot. I met you for a cough, and the way that that caffeine hit me was fucking wild. What was in it? I've been 10 out of 10. I've had a headache. Yeah. I've been going. I've been delirious. I've been yelling shit at people all day. Yeah. I'm out of my mind a little bit today. Yeah, and then you, you just turn the mics on. Because we walked all the way from your house in Brooklyn to the studio over the Manhattan Bridge, and I got to tell you. Yeah. You were talking and screaming at people? Yeah. Like you were a homeless Vietnam vet. Yeah, and I took two business calls. You did. Yeah. You are fucking wild. wild. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, I'm wild. And and people even on the business calls were like, what is all that noise? And I was like, New York fucking city, baby. <laughs> Bay fucking rich, cuzzo! <laughs> That's it. Yeah, today we got to get up. Today we're going to be talking about spy planes. Um, and we're going to be talking about fucking Russian cosmonauts. It's going to get fooled. We got a picture of a hyena eating another hyena. On the studio, uh, in the studio right now, that Zach Isis um, has brought out from his personal collection. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a good day. It's literally 126 degrees in New York City. I mean, it is. What we did today was dangerous. What's dangerous? We we had. This is how wild it got. We as soon as we crossed that bridge, Giannis and I had to go into a Chinese hotel and get a beverage. We got an Arnold Palmer. Let's just say this for the record: If you live outside New York, if you live inside New York, you already know Chinatown and summer don't go together. Absolutely not. You do not want to be <laughs> anywhere. Talk in the about fumes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Cause I'm, even you, I don't even think your people want to go there. Yeah. In Chinatown in the summer, bro, garbage everywhere, fish everywhere, and you will see all you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what you see in Chinatown. Uh oh, here we go. You see, of course, all different types of Asian people. Cause I'm not going to assume that they're all from China. You saw all different <laughs> kind of Asian people. <laughs> You see products hanging outside of stores that nobody will ever buy. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants the things that these people are selling. It is what it is. Yeah. Nobody wants it. That's I'm why sorry they're empty. To tell you. Stores are empty. Yeah. You'll see crabs uh, in fish tanks pressed up 
against the window. So it's <laughs> it's just a window full of crabs. Yeah, it's just dead a water ducks window. hanging from hooks. You'll see dead ducks, and what you'll see is white people in shorts that are too short with one side of their head shaved, watching their laptops, listening to podcasts, ri- driving city bikes 90 miles an hour. <laughs> Because they feel bad that they're white and they want to uh, assimilate into the Asian community. But deep down, they don't. They hate it. Deep down, they fucking all hate it, and they're all full of shit. Okay, that's what you see. The only, the only, the only stores that are doing any business in Chinatown are the are Rite Aids, uh, uh, you know, Ferraris. When you want to get a cannoli, that's what these people want. Okay, yeah. they, listen, nobody even knows what the stores mean. I mean, I don't know. They got they had a store. It was called Twelve Closets. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. Well, what here, am I buying in that store? Here's something. Look. Uh, if you're considering this culturally insensitive, well, then reality and my eyes and nose are culturally insensitive. That's what it is. Because what it is, is you're in Chinatown, it smells like death. That's what it does. It smells like death. Even if you're an Asian person, you have to fucking admit that it doesn't smell good down there. <laughs> not in the summer. I love the people. I'm not saying I don't love the people. Oh, and you know what's you know, another fucking thing that's in every Chinatown all over the world? And I, Somebody fucking tell me why. Why does every Chinatown have a Popeye's? What is going on with Popeye's fried chicken and the Asian communities? I want to know. Yeah, for some reason they love I the Popeye's. Know. Yeah. And it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's not that I want to know because I don't like it. I'm just, I, I want to be, I want to be educated on it. That's Look, all. When you cross, that, I like it. When you cross, when you cross from Chinatown into Little Italy, Italy, I mean, the smell gets a little better. It it truly does. I mean, it is what it is. And I'm not saying Italian grandmas smell good either. I mean, you know, they're not, you know, how Italian guys go out there don't use. But deodorant. they're not smelling their. They're not fucking sitting outside selling their food. They're not fucked. They because I, I saw two live crabs crawl out of their garbage <laughs> in Chinatown. So it's like that's the problem. You can't have live crabs. You know, and you can't do business in flip flops every day. No, because you, your feet, you can't have your feet out. Yeah, with, with like while you're selling dried whatever the fuck sea urchin. That's it. You're selling dried sea urchin. It yeah. stinks to high heaven, and I can't see your feet. You got to pick one or the other. That's what it is. And you're yeah. going to sell sea urchin, or you're going to ha- have your feet out. You can't have yeah. both. Yeah, because am I wrong? You're not wrong is at that all. Culturally insensitive. And you know what's so fucking unbelievable? I I saw five. I saw five. Chinese businesses that the awning itself was in Chinese letters. Yeah. Everybody in there hasn't spoken English since they got here, which I'm okay with. Yeah. Why do they have "I'm um with her" stickers all over the walls? <laughs> Explain that to me. Why do you, are they with her? I don't know if they are. Yeah. I don't think they know the difference. I think these white honky donks <laughs> are coming in there and throwing up "I'm um with her" stickers everywhere because they're trying to rent out the property from above them. And basically, what they're, they're doing is they're getting a good deal because yeah. they think they're good people. They're like, "Oh, I got a spot down in Chinatown for a thousand dollars a month." When really, what you're doing, you fucking white evil piece of shit, yeah. is sitting there on your high horse and getting a deal off the Asian people that are working their ass off. To feed you and your fucking fat acai bowl appetite. Because I Bad. got yeah. I got South Asian and Asian friends okay. right, who I've heard, who've told me, who've been to China. My ex-girlfriend used to, she worked for a jewelry company. She went to China a few times. Right. And not to like the main, not to Beijing. I'm talking about like to where these factories are in some of these smaller cities. Yeah. And, and I've had Indian friends tell me the same thing. The level of sanitation there, different from America. Absolutely. You shit in a hole. That's what You're it is. Shit in a hole. It is what it is. It is what it is. It's kid. not as clean. It's a different. It's a different level of cleanliness. It is what it is, kid. Yeah. That's what it is. You it know, is. you you're gonna tell me that you go go on your you know self righteous horse and you're the best person of all time because you donated a dollar to a GoFundMe to help an Indian kid. Why don't you go to India? Yeah. Move to India. Yeah. You want to show me you're a hero? Yeah. Move to India. Yeah. Because at least I'm man enough to say I want to help, but I'm not moving to India. No. I'm not moving to <laughs> India. I would like to help, yeah. but I'm not going to India. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not going. You like a flushable toilet. I need a flushable toilet. Oh, oh, you know, oh, yeah, the, the, the oh, yeah, because, you know, you're, you say, oh, I'm just used to, you know, 2000, you know 2018 um, amenities. Yeah, I am. Yeah. The, 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 the difference with a guy like me and a guy like you is I'm truthful about it. Yeah. That's the part that bothers me the most is y- these people want to be so self-righteous, yeah. but they're all full of shit. It's all for show. I'm going to tell you honestly yeah. how I feel and what I'm willing to do and not do, yeah. and you're going to fucking deal with it because a lot of people live in a world right now where there's no consequences. Yeah. Well, we need to start bringing back the consequences. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's what I'm saying. Uh-oh. Guess what? Maybe I'm going to start riding my bicycle again when you think I'm just riding a bicycle, but really the handlebar of the bicycle is a metal pipe. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And when you when I see your when I see your fucking I'm with her stickers yeah. come out and your fucking protest signs yeah. and you want to yell at me yeah. because I don't understand that I'm a straight white male and yeah. I don't understand my white privilege, I'm gonna hit you with a crowbar. It's How about Danny that? Aiello from fucking do the right thing. How about that? Get out of my piece of 
pizzeria. That's what it is. I love the way he says pizzeria. No, obviously I'm kidding. Obviously I'm fucking joking. I just want to say here on the podcast that I was just kidding. We're characters. Yes. These are the Bay Ridge boys. That we're only characters Absolutely. making fun of the issues of 2018. And we do not stand behind any of the things that the character of Chris Stefano or the character of Giannis Papa stands for. So I just want to say burn, baby, burn. <laughs> <laughs> we are male feminists. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. Yeah, I want to cut my dick off and put it in a fucking. I want to put cut my dick off and put it in a gluten free box. You know what it is. You know what I'm sick of. What do you want? What are you sick of? Since we're playing these characters, we don't really believe the things that we're saying. Yes. <laughs> I'm fucking sick of hearing about toxic masculinity being a problem yeah. that leads to uh, sexual assault, sexual mm -hmm. abuse, harassment, yeah. in the work, all that stuff. Yeah. You know what? You know what it is? What is it? You know? M me and you, we're masculine guys. We're guys. I'm a guy. Look, I got we're not, we're not going to sexually harass you. you Never. Wanna, you want to know why? Yeah. Because women want to fuck us. That's what it, it is. It is what it is. It is what it they is. They want to fuck us. Cause and yeah. we want to fuck them. I, and it is what it is. Yeah. And the problem is not fucking masculinity. Yeah. That's not the, the problem. That's not is the problem. These fucking do. There's certain people who are fucking insecure, deeply insecure, or they're mentally ill, or whatever the fuck their problem yeah. is, and they're psychos. Yep. And they'll always be psychos like that. Yeah. Right. And if you've noticed recently in the comedy community, these people who are being accused of sexual harassment or whatever, right. they're not masculine. They're these dudes who are pretending to be feminist Nazis. Absolutely. And then it turns out that maybe they were a little abusive or controlling in their relationship. What? Maybe they were a little jealous and shit like that. Masculine dudes don't do that. That's, That's what not it is. masculine behavior. That's exactly. We don't pretend to be your fucking ally. We tell you, hey, baby, I'm looking at you like you're a piece of meat. That's what I'm it is. Because I'm a guy. It is what it is. And that deep down, that's what the women want to hear because all the guys, that's a good point. Because a lot of times what happens is, is in comedy, you know, women start to, uh, you know, women like guys that can make them laugh and they start to get, you know, they start to, you know, get sexually attracted to that and that's great. But a lot of these guys, the reason why they developed comedy and a sense of humor was as a weapon because they were small, they were short, they were weird looking, Autistic, they were nerdy. Yeah, yeah they had, they were sad, some type of, they were on the spectrum in some way. So <laughs> women, so women didn't like them. So what do they develop? A yeah. sense of humor. And yeah. then they start to, they're very good at writing jokes and then their career takes them to a point now yeah. where they never learned how to talk to a woman, yeah. but yet you have a thousand women throwing themselves at them. They don't know what to do. Yeah. Not me, cuz. Yeah. I'm sorry. Guess what? I was fucking born. I just, when I came out of the womb, I can't help it. I was a fucking weird looking kid to begin with, but then I don't know. I got, I started to get broad you shoulders. You also were achieving things. You were playing I hoops. I was achieving things. I You're could a play cute fucking kid. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was banging, I was trying to bang all the Puerto Rican girls in my neighborhood. I was fucking El Blanquito. I had, I had attention from the opposite sex. Me too, So yeah. now that I've gotten some success in my career, I understand no means no. And I'm not going to sexually assault a girl. I'm just trying to move on. If a woman doesn't like me, it is what it is. Yeah. I don't live in a fucking utopia where everyone has to like me. I understand there are going to be people that don't like me. And yeah. then I just move on and I respectfully uh, understand the woman's wishes of not wanting to go any further. And I just fucking jerk off into my belly button and I move on. Have you I, noticed how full of shit all these people are? They're all full of shit. Have you noticed like the ones who've been getting in trouble and stuff like that are yeah. ones who, who don't exhibit like normal guy behavior yeah. and pretend to be these sort of allies yeah. and then it turns out they're putting fish hooks in people's mouths of course they're fucking controlling behavior yeah. Cosby's walking yeah. around like he's the fucking cleanest motherfucker he's no. actually yeah. raping unconscious women Cause you know who's not gonna do that me and you, me and we're you. not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not comparing myself to this guy anyway comedically because he's a fucking at the top of the game. But you know who's never going to get in trouble? Because I'm sure he's never done anything disrespectful. It's a guy like Joe Rogan. Yeah. Just a real fucking man's yeah. man. Yeah. Masculine guy has been cute his whole life. Yeah. Been famous for a long time now. Says the truth. Doesn't act like he's some fucking superhero. Yeah. Is a human being first and foremost. He's just He lives in reality. Yeah. And he's going to understand. That if, an, uh, 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 if, if a girl says no, it's no. Yeah. And that is what it is. Well, because he doesn't have that deep insecurity. Right. Because he's accomplished stuff. Yeah. He's, 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 a, he's successful in his career. He was a successful actor. He was a su successful karate dude. That's he's what it is. He's a successful TV host. Yeah. He doesn't have that deep insecurity that leads to that kind of need for control or deep, sick fucking behavior. Masculinity is not the fucking problem. I'm sick of fucking hearing it. You want to know what? Masculinity is what you're attracted to. Masculinity yeah. is what protects you, is what protects you That's from some it. of the dark forces in this world yeah. that'll fucking do the 
things to you that you're talking about. That's what it so is. So fucking don't throw the baby out with the fucking bathwater. Yeah. It's now that we live in a culture where for some reason you're trying to tie every inevitable horrible thing in the world because nature's a horrible place to fucking toxic masculinity or fucking the male patriarchy. It's like just because yeah. you're living in that fucking utopia doesn't yeah. mean it's true yeah. because it's a fantasy. Yeah. You're all living in the internet. That's you what haven't is. learned how to adapt. You found a fucking tribe in the, and you're just yelling shit on the internet that you don't really believe because it's not based in fucking reality. I'm looking this at This hyena it. eating another hyena. That's reality. That's, that's, reality. that's reality. what I was looking at. Fuck yeah, dude. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I want to fucking put some Vaseline on my dick and fuck you in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're guys. Yeah. Listen, the views dude. that we just Yo, espoused. Bardo's hair is wild. Yo, Bardo is fucking zoning out. Yeah. Yo, the views that we just espoused are those of two characters that we make fun of. They do. We don't believe any of that stuff. We're two no. diverse feminists, and we have a Middle Easterner who is our thing. Yeah, we always have a girl on the podcast, and we have yes. Bardo who is a gay man. And I love NPR and CNN. Absolutely, and BuzzFeed, and of course HuffPo. Yeah, HuffPo. Shout out. Yeah, love it. Yes, yes, um, yes. Um, okay. Uh, and while we're on the note, while we're yeah, making away, let's let's make fun of the other fucking side. Yeah. You know what I'm sick of? Well, what? Did you I'm sick of hearing about you fucking barely educated fucking right wing losers talking about white supremacy. Yeah. Right. You ever notice it's the fucking shit. Of the of the species, oh sure. Who who advocate? What have you done? Nothing. What's the guy's name? Richard Spencer. What have you done? Born into a rich family. What That's have all. you accomplished yourself that proves your supremacy? Name one fucking accomplishment that you have contributed yeah, to nothing. humanity. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You are living on the backs of other geniuses who have created everything for you. And guess what? Those geniuses, their genius had nothing to fucking do with their ethnicity their color yeah. or whatever, yeah. okay? Nothing. Because if you go back through history, there's great uh, inventors and creators in the Asian world, in the in the Arab world, in the white world, uh, Africa. It, it's been the collaboration of these cultures throughout history and them sharing information, which has he evolved culture, evolved the invention. What have you fucking done? So I'm sick of them, all right? You barely fucking educate. A lot of these people, you got a fucking podcast. You so It sounds like a freshman college conversation. Yeah. That's what you're fucking blog or whatever it sounds like. Yeah. It sounds like conversations I was having when I was a fucking freshman. Grow the fuck up. Yeah. You don't live in the real world. I'm not going to take you seriously if you can't even pay your own fucking rent. That's don't what tell is. me what your theories of government on. If you got a fucking roommate. If you got a fucking roommate. All right? Oh, you're, I'm a, I'm a conservative. I'm a yeah. little, you don't know. We're all self-interested pieces of garbage. You have a roommate, you take the bus to work. Shut How the about the that? Up. Shut up. I'm a libertarian. I believe in free market. Do yeah, you? you're poor. Do you? You're poor. That's what it is. Also, you ever notice everyone's a libertarian? Everyone's a libertarian, and they're all about free market, you know? Yeah. And, until they start a business and it fails. Yeah, then, and then, they then have, you're a capitalist Republican fuck. No, then you have no qualms yeah. ta taking a socialist bankruptcy bailout. Mm -hmm. Never in the history of the world has there been a libertarian whose business failed, and then they went, you know what? I'm going to forego the bankruptcy because I'm a libertarian, and the market really kicked my ass on that one. I got what I deserved, so I'm going to go sleep in a homeless shelter for the next year. Bullshit. That's I'm making some good points, Pardo. Yeah, yeah, you're making some good points. Wow, yeah. we're getting the rage out today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you yeah. you start, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. and I just want to let no, you know. you got me going. Giannis yeah. is making all these points, fucking yeah. yelling at people with a backward Chicago White Sox hat on at the top of his head and fucking earmuffs. Because we're sick of it. We're fed up today. Yeah, I'm fed up. We're yeah. fucking it's hot. fed up. It's too hot. Yeah, it's too hot. It's too hot for the shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. want to say fuck? You want to give the middle finger to? You want to give the middle finger? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? The truth is, what it is. I have also haven't had too many carbs lately, so what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to go home. I'm not going to say anything to anyone. I'm not going to take to social media or Twitter because I have control. I'm going to fucking go eat some fruit, jerk off, take a nap. <laughs> That's, right. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah cause we, we went wild. We went wild, but we you know what, cuz? Listen. Did, listen. Is there anything we said that wasn't true? No. It all seemed pretty true. Yeah. I, mean, I must yeah. admit that. It's, and that's from someone in Hamas. That's right. Yeah. So there you go. And, yo, if you guys want to see us spewing that fucking funny shit live, we got some dates coming up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go on my website, chrisdcomedy.com. I'm going to be coming up. I got um, Dallas, the uh, Addison Improv. I'm coming to Dallas, Texas, July 
uh, 17th to the 19th, I think, on ChristyComedy.com. Then the Montreal Comedy Festival, July 23rd, 28th. And then August 5th to the 8th, the Borgata in Atlantic City with Giannis, Freddy Cheese, Papa. And I will be with Chrissy D at those Borgata dates. Mm -hmm. I will also be in Syracuse this weekend. So if Whoa. you're on the Patreon, I will be with my good buddy Sergio Chicone. And we're going, uh, we're going to uh, the Funny Bone in Syracuse. So uh, get your tickets for that. I'll be at Uncle Vinny's in Jersey. Where's that? Point Pleasant, Jersey. Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Uh, in August. I can't remember the exact dates. Check that out. And Pittsburgh Improv. Check that fucking out. And every Thursday in New York City, uh, come out. I'm hosting um, Live in Gotham, which is Gotham Comedy Club's new virtual reality show. Um, partnered up with uh, Oculus and Facebook. It's uh, it's an amazing show uh, that airs in virtual reality on Oculus, and uh, I'm hosting uh, this first season, and it's been absolutely amazing. So if you live in New York City, come out and check one of those shows every Thursday, 10 p.m. Um, you bring a Sergio's a great guy. Ah, oh, come on, he's going to do a little boys. boxing. It's, it's going to be boys. good. Yeah, one of our boys. Um, Sergio's calling the best. Um, yeah, cause so yeah, this. I'm sick of everybody. Really, sick of I'm every sick of everyone bitching, bro. Well, I think I think in a way, in a way, um, it ties into what we're going to do next because I think what we want to talk about is um, in October of what was it nineteen was it nineteen sixty nine. What are you, what are you talking about? That? Yeah, I'm yeah, still worked up. Yeah, plane? Yeah, yeah, I'm still worked up. Spy yeah. plane, our guy, um, the guy's name was... See, the, the guy's name, these names are always hard to remember. Well, no, well, this guy, but this guy was the Americano. This guy's name was Charles W. Maltzby. And what happened was, is he was flying this, it was called a U-2 yeah. plane. Before the band U-2, it was called U-2. And it could fly 70,000 feet in the air. And it's an American spy plane. And what it would do is it would collect radioactive dust particles from the sky. Yeah. Because it was a time with the U.S. and Russia was called the Cold War. And basically how we just got fed up. Just imagine I was the U.S. and Giannis was Russia. And we got fed up. And the only difference was instead of me and Giannis wanting to go out there and fucking, you know, we, we, we say things and we joke around and we're like, we've had enough of people, you know, all this self-righteous bullshit. We've had enough. But just imagine it's two countries now that both have nukes. That's yeah. how mad they were at each other, and they were armed with nuclear warheads. Yeah, you got to you got to imagine time. This is post World War II, where and not too far, post, not like too twenty far years out, out, away from it. Well, a little bit more now. Well, talking, I mean, twenty five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty five yeah. years. You're right. Actually, you're right. Yeah, because the beginning of the Cold War. Yeah, it's the beginning of the Cold War because the Cold War lasted all the way basically until to the eighties, right? To the eighties. Yeah. So you're talking about post World War War with the United States and. And and Russia were fucking allies against the Germans. Yeah. But the big problem was Russians were communists. We were capitalists. Right. So we were basically enemies because we had opposing economic theories and systems, but we had to team up to beat these fascists, right? That's what it was, yeah. So Stalin and FDR and Truman, they got into bed to beat these guys. Right. Because war makes for strange bedfellows. That's what it is. But, so what happened is... Uh, a lot of people believe that Truman actually dropped the bomb, that he didn't need to drop the bomb. Yeah, especially that second one. Yeah, and yeah. he did it to scare Stalin, to let him know, because they knew that the Cold yeah. War and the arms race was coming. Because Russia was a powerhouse, they were communists, and this was kicked off the Cold War. He wanted to let them know that they were armed to the teeth. Armed Do you know the where teeth. that comes from? Did I say where armed to the teeth comes from? Yeah. Did I ever say that once on the pod? He did, because you learned it out there overseas when you were traveling. Tell Bro. him again. Okay, armed to the teeth. It's, it's an expression that comes from the teeth bridge in Scotland. Um, and uh, back in the uh, 1300s, um, like William Wallace times, uh, uh, if, if you were only allowed to be all coming into this town in Scotland, you were only allowed to carry your weapons up until the Teeth Bridge. Then you had to leave them with the Scottish garrison at the Teeth Bridge and enter the city with no weapons. And then cut your heads and dicks off. Yeah. So here we are. That sets the stage. So for about 20 years, there's an arms race going on. We're both scared of each other. We're trying to win. You know, we're trying to win the countries over. Uh, you know, we're trying to hold. We're trying to spread capitalism. They're trying to spread communism. Right. These are the two economic systems that are yes. that are opposed to each other. They're polar opposites, right? Polar opposites. You guys know this shit. So boom, here it all culminates in 1961, in October, yeah. in fucking the Cuban Missile Crisis. One of the absolute most fucking wild moments in American. And global history, cause he was absolutely, he, cause he was he was a fucking bear, bear. cause he was he had a fucking good hair, cause, cause yo, if I was alive during that time, I would have been a nervous kid. Yeah, Yo, you, yeah, you know, yeah, it's funny. but I fight with the good guys, you know that. You look like a marine, but 
You're not, cuz. No. Your personality's not. No, I'm a scared kid. Yeah. I'm a scared kid. Bad. But I think if, if if push come to shove and I got on those battle lines and I survived a couple battles, got some confidence, I'd probably run into a landmine. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about 1961, October, right? Um, obviously, we have Fidel Castro down there. You had a yeah. communist revolution down there. Yeah, Fidel Castro wore small hats. Yeah, he did. He was also a good, pretty good baseball player. Yes, he's a handsome kid, too. Call, tall kid. We talked about that in the last podcast. Yeah, most big kids aren't tall besides six, Fidel. One. Six, six foot one. Yeah, pretty tall kid. Ha- and he had a caliphate beard, too. Love sticks. Yeah, Love smoke, smoking smoke sticks. Yeah. yeah, smoking cigars. So they had a communist. Uh, he was a dictator in Cuba, as you know, and um, allied. Uh, Strongly, obviously, with Russia, with Mother Russia for them. That's where they got their back, and they were a small island nation. And uh, the w- the reason why that made America nervous, obviously, is because we're talking about an island uh, that is basically, what are we talking about? 90 miles. 90 fucking miles off the, off coast, the coast, of coast of Florida. Off the Key West, Key West right? Yeah. yeah. Usually, all the wars that we have to deal with happen in, across the ocean. The ocean is the biggest defense we have. Absolutely. Absolutely, and and that and that Canada is just you know whatever. It's like, Canada's yeah, kind of just on. yeah. Just do what we do, all right. Just do what we do, yeah. Just, just listen to what we say. Just yeah. get in line. Yeah, Canada's kind of like just walk around with a helmet yeah. all day. I yeah, I mean it is what it is. It is Chris what it say. is. Yeah, yeah, Mexico kind of just you know. It is what back it is. in the day they had numbers, but we, they don't have numbers anymore. No, no, really, no, no. yeah, yeah. They do what we do. Yeah. So this was the first time really that we had such a big threat that we had uh, our our enemy. Are the, the back then this this was there was superpowers. Now we're the really only superpower. Now China is becoming another superpower. Russia is trying to make comeback. But back then there were two superpowers. We were one and Russia, That's two it. fucking superpowers. We both had nukes and it was scary yeah. because we both had uh, different economic philosophies and both of us wanted to take over the world. Yeah. So it's fucking. Who's scary got more back. nukes now, us or Russia? Oh, we got more nukes. Yeah, we have the most. nukes. We have the most fucking nukes. But you know the thing about nukes is they're redundant. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. How- you only need a few to. Blow you only the need two or three. Yeah, blow the whole fucking place up. Yeah. So uh, nuclear fallout, all the dust rising in the air, fucking yeah, you no just sunlight. need two or three. Yeah, people die of radioactive poisoning. It's a bad deal. Yeah. That's why they found every the, kid gets born with four yeah. arms. Yeah. The, the United Nations League grew out of the League of Nations. Was it was all about because scientists were trying to lobby these politicians to say, "Hey, look, we can't do this anymore. You guys yeah. got to get together because war is it's antiquated. You can't make it. Modern warfare, like my father always told me, it's too brutal. You can't really do it. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's against your own interest. So we have to stop it at some yeah. point. But at this point, it's shit is hitting the fan, and so. Cuba's nervous about us. We're nervous about Cuba. The whole fucking thing. Khrushchev, uh, who's running uh, Russia at the time, fat kid, drinker too. Can we pull up his pick? Fat fuck. Fat fucking kid. Yeah, drank a lot. They're all fat. Yeah, kids. except Putin's in good Dude, shape. Dude, they love vodka bad. Yeah, Putin's in good shape. I mean, though. vodka. They vodka. love vodka. If you ever want to, fo- if you want to have a really good Instagram follow, yeah. go follow. Look at this Russian. Yeah, and you'll see uh, next Khrushchev. Yeah, Khrushchev, and then after that, pull up, look at this Russian, and you'll see some pics <laughs> of the funniest fucking Russian things you've ever seen in your fucking life. Yeah. He doesn't look that fat. Nah, he looks like he lost a little weight, but he looks like he drinks a lot of vodka. Yeah, his off. name's Nikita. Yeah. I yeah. was I was confusing him in my head with Boris Yeltsin. He was a fat kid. Yeah. He blew was out. Was Gorbachev no? fat? No. Nah, he just had a, he had a, he had a skin cancer on his forehead. Bad. Bad. Yeah, but he yo, he was the one who really fucking loosened it all up. Because you know, pull up, look Gorbachev. at this Russian on Instagram. It's called one word. Look at this Russian. Yo, Khrushchev, though, he looks Russian bad. Yeah, he's Russian. He looks like a thumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Khr- there you go. Look at this Russian. Look at this Russian. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one's fucking wild. <laughs> Let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, Russian people. I mean, look at this guy's got a fucking thing of Putin on the tattoo. Of, look at that dog. Yeah, this guy's got a Putin tattoo on the back of his head. Yeah, yeah look at this. Yeah, scroll keep, down keep a little. Scrolling. Keep scrolling. Oh, yeah, look, look at this guy. guy. Look fucking... at this guy with the broken nose and a broken eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a broken Yo. eye. And then there's another guy has got a baguette on his dick. <laughs> Go, look at this guy's biceps with this woman. Yeah. Yeah, the... it's called Look at This Russian. Oh, my God. Yeah, Russians are wild. Yeah, they're fucking wild, they're wild fucking people. They're wild human beings. They're scary human beings. Yeah, look, I mean, look at this guy holding a hand, sitting on another guy's lap. Yeah, look at scroll that Scroll down guy. a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, you could just fly through, and there's good ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the guy with the guns. Look at that guy. Look at oh, this yeah. guy. Look at these two. Look, look at uh, this guy. Look at this guy's fucking face. They got all, yeah. you look know, at, from Chernobyl. You know those biceps are injections. Absolutely. Yeah, that's not normal. Yeah, these kids are nuts. Look what at this. What the fuck's this guy doing? He's putting fire in his nose? Probably. He's probably lighting his nose hair on fire. <laughs> look at this guy's just got a fucking, look at this. 
Look, he's just got a dog sitting on what the bus. What is tattoo? Says, thanks, mother, for my life. Thanks, wow. ma- M-A-T-H-E-R. Yeah. <laughs> T-H-E-N-K-S, thanks, mother, for my life. Yo, Russians are fucking wild. Yeah, look at this guy. This is the Russian Tom Petty they got. They got all these guys. Yeah, look at these guys. They got the Russian Leonardo DiCaprio. Yo, they don't got really any good barbers in Russia. No. Oh, they, look, at they're they forcing look, this guy to drink vodka. Look, this is how you torture him. Cousin, they love Adidas. That guy's going to die if They fuck. love Adidas. Oh, yeah, Sw- and track suits, too. Yeah. yeah. Vodka, they love it bad. Bad, bad, bad. So we're talking about 1961, Cuban Missile Crisis. So it's fucking tense. Right. Okay? The island of Cuba. We're nervous about Cuba. We're nervous about Russia's hegemony over Cuba. They're worried about us. You know, there's a lot of miscommunication happening over time. It's tense. All the apartment buildings in Bay Ridge, for example, have signs that say fallout shelter here. Really? This was the time. Yeah, my building. If you look at all my the apartments. My building, apartment, too, yeah. was old That's fallout what shelter. fallout. So fallout. Because yes. sh- I've seen those signs everywhere. That's from the Cold War? Yeah, n- nuclear fallout. Fallout shelter. Meaning, like, in case of a nuclear. Because what happens in, ca- in nuclear war is that. It, 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 the, bu- yeah. the explosion's so big, it puts up all this dust. It's basically what happened to the dinosaurs. So, you know, when, when, the, when the meteor hit, all this dust flew into the atmosphere and blocked the sun. And that brought on an ice age because there was so much fucking dust. So when the nukes go off, all these explosions are going to throw up all this shit into the air and it'll coat the sky and the sun won't be able to get through and everything will fucking freeze, including all the radioactive fallout and shit like that. So right. the nuclear fallout shelters where you go in there, you eat canned food, and you hope you can survive down there long enough for all this shit to settle and you come out and, you know, it's just roaches and rats, cuzzy. That's the only thing and that Chrissy makes it- Day, because nothing's getting through that fucking head. No. You don't got to go into a fucking Yeah, fallout I'll yeah. tell you what, in that you- fall, I'll fucking find those smoothies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fucking find your smoothies, cuz. Cuz, if they don't got smoothies in a fallout shelter, you What am I gonna do? Yeah, gun to the head for they me. Don't got smo- cause if they don't got smoothies, pizza, and canals, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Cuz, if I can't be a cutie with a smoothie, uh, when I wanna be a cutie with a smoothie, I'll go out. Cuz, yo, when I'm having a bad day, all I do is smooth up, and yeah. all of a sudden I feel cute. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Cause yeah, if you guys are ever having a bad day out there, I know there's a lot of mental health problems right now. I'm telling you, it's there's nothing, there's nothing in this fucking world that a little smooth can't fix. Absolutely you not. Just get a little sip, go to wherever you are. I mean, you could cause you could be in fucking Thailand, they got smoothie shops. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Khrushchev had already shipped like 160 warheads. Okay. That were on Cuba that America didn't even know were there. Yeah. And that's why we were flying spy planes over there to yeah. try to get some reconnaissance yeah. to see. What was on there, what the Russians had going on over there. So there's a constant reconnaissance thing. There's two frontiers, really, with Russia at this point. Right. Okay? We got fucking Cuba down there, which is basically Russia's little bitch. Yeah. And their little launching pad there. Yeah. And then we got Alaska. Alaska. And then how close that is across the Bering Strait to Russia. I mean, there's residents right now who live in high rises in Alaska that can see Russia from their fucking... Sarah Palin said that she could see Russia from her backyard. Absolutely. I probably don't believe that. That's how close it is. Yeah. It's so close. So there's two frontiers, and um, naturally, there was reconnaissance missions being flown by both enemies, Russia and the United States, USSR at the time. Um uh, over each other's borders or close to it. But we didn't really cross. What we would do is, as Chrissy said, was what these spy planes would do, was they would fly up in the air uh, over Alaska and try to take some samples from the from the wind, from the clouds, to get some radioactive... This is how smart human beings are. Yeah. To see... Because when they test nukes, yeah. it gives off some shit in the right. dust in the air right. that they can, if they get the air, they can see and they can tell what kind of yeah. test. It's like it's like a filtering like a swimming pool. It's like that same kind of net that they have. Yeah, but isn't that fucking wild? Because yeah. it's the air over Antarctica, but they're saying if it blows this way, they can catch the air and test the air and find out exactly what kind of nuclear tests the Russians are doing. Exactly. So that's the kind of reconnaissance we're talking about. Now, this story is an un, it's not that well known. I dug around, me and Chrissy, me and Chrissy dug around and found this fucking story. Yep. It, it, it reads like a goddamn movie. It really does. Unbelievable. So, at ABT, this, truth be told. Truth be fucking told. So at this point, right, there's a, we got a naval blockade on Russia, which is fucking wild. Russian ships are coming. The Navy's there. They're, the Russians, Russian ships, American ships, all fucking squaring off. They, we have a spy plane that flies over Cuba. 70,000 feet in the air. And they fucking Castro with Russian missiles disobeys Moscow, right? And shoots it fucking down. Did the pilot survive or they shot The pilot it? fucking survived, but they shot the fucking plane down. Yeah, and the pilot just ejected. Yeah, so they shot the plane down. So the shit is tense. Now, this is all right before what we're about to tell you. This 
is fucking wild. Now, all this time, John F. Kennedy and his brother, Robert Kennedy, they're both fucking Marilyn Monroe as well. Both of them fucked her? Yeah. I thought you was JFK. Both of around. them, yeah. Both yeah, Kennedys, Kennedys was handsome guys, though. Yeah, Kennedy was like you, cuz. Yeah, handsome he guy. He was a cute fucking kid. Handsome Irresistible kid. kind of kid. And girls loved him, loved right? Loved him, kid. Yeah, and yeah. Much, much like you, he had problems with his back. Yeah. I mean, you don't have him yet, but, yo, that back's going to blow out. But I did get, I, yeah, my back uh, my back hurts because I'm going to tell you guys, the Patreon members only, Chrissy D got into a car accident a couple days ago, and I got some back problems. That's going to be our exclusive So that, Patreon. that's our Patreon episode you want to hear about my car crash. Yo, but Kennedy had a chronic, horrible back. They had to take painkillers. He had to lay down all the time. And you... You got bad tattoos on your back. Yeah, I got it's bad the same tattoos. Thing. Yeah, and I and I got fucking and I just got wide hips. You do. Yeah. You got birthed hips. Yeah. So, um, Robert Kennedy was back channel negotiating with the Russian ambassador named Dobryanin. Dobryanin. Can't it's even a cute name. It. Cute name. Dobryanin. And listen, before we tell you about this, it, it's worth noting that. These back channel negotiations where the Russian ambassador would meet with Robert F. Kennedy, both of them meeting on behalf of his brother John F. Kennedy and Khrushchev, is really what saved the world. There's a great book called, um, uh, what, what was it called? By Beschloss? I always say it. Destiny. Uh, uh, fuck. The Crisis Years. I'm sorry. The Crisis Years by this guy named Beschloss, who really details how important these back-channel negotiations between Robert Kennedy and Ambassador uh, <laughs> are. So because, listen, Khrushchev had to talk tough for his people to keep that morale high and that belief in communism, yep. and they didn't want to get pushed around, and John F. Kennedy have to, had to talk tough. So publicly, the both were talking tough, but privately and in back-channel, they both knew the magnitude and the danger of this situation, and they were trying to resolve it, and that's what actually ended up resolving it was, was those back-channel negotiations, but for the time, as far as everyone knew, fucking tense. Everyone's preparing for nuclear war, kids are going under desks, there's fallout shelters, and now here we are, naval blockade, Fucking nuclear nuclear missiles and warheads on on the island of Cuba. We have our nuclear weapons fucking lined up there in Turkey, in Italy, yeah. and fucking Florida and the coast of America. They're pointed at each other. It's fucking wild. And then this little known crazy fact happens that recently got declassified that almost really led to an all out fucking nuclear war. None of us would be here. There'd be no triggered. There'd be no offended. There'd no. be no iPhones. No. Nothing There'd would be. There'd be no here. Starbucks. No Starbucks. Yeah, because what would have happened is is if the if if things would have played out another way and if literally we're talking about seconds seconds from disaster, all these fucking planes, the US and the Russian planes were all armed with fucking nukes. Nuclear nuclear dipped Nuclear tipped warheads, which I don't know what that. I don't know what that means either. Was it? Is it just you fucking just dip? You dip a missile just in a little bit of nuke juice. I think it's like when you know when you dip your you know you dip your schween in a little pung pung. Yeah, that's so what it is. Dip it in. Is it you just dip it in? Because I because it was like it said nuclear coated, nuclear tipped. I'm like, is yeah. it a nuke or not? But I think it was. I think it's dipped in nukes. It's dipped in nukes. I don't know Probably if nukes dipped is... in a little uranium. <laughs> Cause do you want to know fucking wild fact just about human beings? What we all have in our cells. Nuclear. All our cells are nuclear bombs. How uh, wild is that? Is that true? Yeah, it's true. That's how much energy we, we have. The same energy inside our cells that the sun has. Same energy. Oh. So if, if we could, if if we if there were like a if there was ever like a certain chemical, we could all technically turn our bodies into nukes. Wow. Oh. But I I don't know how. I mean, science by like splitting the atom because all it is is like splitting atoms. Once right? Einstein said, once you split the atom, it's you fuck you know big problem. We're playing. It's, yeah, we're playing we got big problems. Yeah. Big problems. Yeah. yeah. He split that atom. He said, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, when he split that atom, he went, uh-oh, spaghetti -o. <laughs> So now we move up to Alaska while all this is going on. Like yeah, good said. state. What's the capital? Juno. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're up in Alaska now. So yeah, which we, I would love to. I would love to gig out. You want to do a show in Alaska? Let's do it together. Yeah. If you guys know anybody, if anybody listening to this podcast is in Alaska, yeah, uh, tell your local booker to get Chrissy D and Yanni P, the Bay Ridge boys out there. We'll come out there. Yeah, get the podcast. We'll big. come out. There. We'll drive out there too. We'll, we'll make it a road drive. trip. Oh, hey, dude, I swear to fucking God, I know. I'll drive to Alaska. I'll drive to Yukon Territory. I don't give a fuck. I know, cause you are fucking wild. This yeah. is how wild you are. You were like, yo, I'm real tired. I need to cough up. I'm real hot. But then you're like, yo, you want to walk across the Manhattan Bridge? Because you live in contradictions. You just yeah. live. You you just, you don't, reality is a suggestion for you. Yeah. You're fucking wild. I'm wild. You make your own rules. That's what it is. I'm having a good time while I'm down here. Yeah, you're a simulator's child. Yeah. So I'm having a lot of fun. We're up in Alaska now. Yeah. The, we have bases up there. So they were, like we said, they're flying these reconnaissance missions. 
with these spy planes, but they're not going. They're they're not going over Russia because that is fucking nobody wants to do that mm-hmm. because that could lead to nuclear war. Both sides knew that. That is a no no. So we're flying over Alaska, trying to get that wind so they can test the air. Now this pilot, what's his name again? His name was um uh, uh hold on, I got his fucking name. I was zoned out. That's all right, cause. No, it wasn't. You got a Mariners jersey. Is that Ken Griffey Jr.? Ken Griffey Jr. Who else could it be? Call Sweet it be swing in baseball. Sweet swing lefty. Yeah. Uh, the pilot's name was Charles W. Maltzby. Maltzby. Now this dude. He was flying to the North Pole. Yeah, young kid too at yeah. the time. Right? What was he twenties? Yeah, uh, he was thirty-six year old kid. Uh, 30, he was a kid. Yeah, but he was flying to the North Pole. Drop up those Christmas gifts. <laughs> 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 That's what I would have done because I would have signed up for that. If I was a fighter pilot, yeah. that's all I'd want to do is fly out to the North Pole. Yeah, yeah. I'd want his fucking mom on a mission to find Santa. Yeah, now when these kids go up in these fucking planes, they go up so high. These spy planes. 70,000 feet. 70,000 feet because they're yeah. basically touching the fucking moon. They, gotta go up, they go up so high that, first of all, the plane is a very flimsy plane because mm. it needs to be flimsy to like, it can't have be like so heavy duty like an F-16 or like a commercial airline because the pressure, is, the air is so thin up there. So it kind of has to like max the pressure and it cannot, it's in a zone at 70,000 feet where if it, go, it has to stay within this six, six knot uh, speed range. If it goes too fast, it'll disintegrate and if the whole plane will fall apart and if it goes too slow, it'll stall and nosedive. So this guy's got to stay Within six nautical, within six knots an hour for the plane not to fucking go one way or another. And also, he's got to wear this suit that when it gets to a point when he turns the engines off, because he has to reserve fuel later on in the story, which we'll tell you about, he's got this suit that basically blows up and makes him look like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. <laughs> to, to all, so, all, so because if, if he didn't have this thing that constricted his body and made his blood flow go slower, his blood would actually explode inside his body. Yeah. Foggy wild. Yo, when I was reading that, I was thinking that that's one of the craziest things I've ever yeah. read. I mean, so this guy's basically tightrope walking with his life up there. How wild is that? I was, I was fucking petrified reading the article. It was crazy, dude. Yeah. It read like a and movie. And imagine being alone and it's dark out. I couldn't do it. Yeah, because I'd be seeing ghosts everywhere. Yeah, because it's winter, so it's dark yeah. up there. So he's flying dark. Plus, yeah. they want to fly over the cover at night just in case there are some fucking Russian yeah. migs. Yeah, and... Guess what the other guess what the other fucking great news is? Yeah. If you if you somehow if you somehow get into problems and then you miraculously uh, uh, um, survive the um, landing, the army can't get you because you're in the middle of a polar ice cap, and the only thing that will get you is polar bears, <laughs> hungry polar bears. So what they're suge- they suggest to you, the yeah. U.S. Army suggests, do not eject, do not um, eject eject that seat, mm-hmm. just die in the plane just crash because you're going to eject and then be eaten alive by polar bears or freeze. Or freeze to death because yeah. we can't get you. <laughs> can't get so you. it's you're gonna die either way. So you might as well just die in the crash. Say up, <laughs> say sayonara. I mean, this guy is in the dark, yeah. flying in a plane that Chrissy just described to you. Has to fly within this six knot radius, or he fucking dis- the plane disintegrates. It, it's crazy. Yeah, how the 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 little margin error. This guy has to be on his toes, and he's up there for what? What is it like eight hours? Eight I mean, hours. It's, it's an eight hour eight trip. hour round trip flight. He's only got nine hours of fuel. He can't pee or take a shit. No, he does it in his suit, right? He's or- supposed to do it in his suit into a little bottle. Yeah. But then once the suit went, but if he hits that Michelin Man Stay Puff Marshmallow suit, he can't do anything. He can't do nothing. Can't get his dick out. No. So this cat is. And when the suit puffs up, it's hard to sit in the seat because it, it's a tiny cockpit. Yeah, the guy was only 5'7", and he barely fit in the cockpit. It's fucking crazy, yeah. dude, to think about the type of people that used to live before we had all these amenities of modernity. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> guess what? That guy's not going to complain if there's a fucking surge in Uber pricing, okay? <laughs> he's not going to tweet about how he's living in fucking hell and how bad America is. He's not going to fucking give a shit, no. okay? That guy doesn't fucking care because he lives in reality and there's consequences with him. So he's flying up uh, doing this mission uh, against the backdrop of uh, another spy plane just recently being shot down over Cuba, which really escalated tension. And this guy goes up, unbeknownst to the whole world, because this was classified for Mm -hmm. many years. And he flies up to do this mission. He's in these circumstances, a complete dark. It's nighttime up in the fucking freezing North Pole. And it's not like there's no GPS, okay, at the time. (laughs) No GPS. All he has is a compass, and he's got to use the stars like fucking Magellan. The dude was using the stars. He has to use the stars. (laughs) He has to use the stars. You understand? It's like a a seafaring fight. It's like fucking a captain, like a ship captain. In like the 1300s. Yeah, he's he's like a pirate ship. It's crazy. He might as well just been flying a fucking airplane made of wood. So he goes up there, and it happened to be 
the time where they were, what are they called? The Aurora Borealis? Aurora Borealis, which is the light show that's like in the North Pole. It's like all like these cosmic, beautiful lights, green and, and yellow and red and all these light. It's a beautiful light show. But what it does is for his for his purposes, you know, if you and I saw it, we'd be like, oh, my God. And people go on trips to, to, to time that. But for him... Uh, it blocked out the navigation stars that he needed. So yeah. he didn't know which way he was going. Yeah, and he was also dumbfounded by the beauty of it. Now, again, this is his story. Yeah. So maybe the guy just got fucking lost because he zoned out or yeah. fell asleep. Yeah, you never know. The kid could, <laughs> he could have been fucking jerking. I mean, you're probably jerking off up there too, right? It could be. He could be because you never know. He could have nodded off because he didn't call Fob. Yeah, you got to call Fob. Get Norwegian coffee from Cafe Cafe. So he seems, he claims that the Aurora Borealis was whatever, how you pronounce it? Aurora, Aurora Borealis, I Aurora think. Aurora Borealis. Can you look that up for us? I think Aurora, it's Aurora. Aurora yeah. Borealis. That's correct, Aurora Borealis. Yeah. So yeah. He sees, Bardo's been there. So he sees that. And it sort of, it obfuscates his view. He doesn't know where he is. And somehow he just gets turned around. And he has no idea where he is. And he gets fucking lost. And he gets lost. The next thing you know, the dude is flying over Russia. He was like well into Russia, wasn't he? Well, he was 300 miles deep into Russia. 300 miles deep into Russia. He gets picked up by the Russian radar. Um, the Russians scramble fucking MIGs, like with like what Chrissy said, with freaking nuclear tipped uh, missiles on them. Now this is right after the Americans. Uh, we had Bay of Pigs, a failed fucking CIA led inv- uh, invasion of Cuba. A fucking spy plane has been shot down, and now they see another spy plane over th- this frontier of the United USSR. So in their mind, they're thinking, holy shit, is this a war? Are they starting shit? Yeah. So they scramble these jets. They got these nuclear missiles on these jets. Luckily, these fucking spy planes fly so high that the, the jets get scrambled and they find the fucking spy plane. But the spy plane is so high, they can't reach it. Yeah. They can't reach it. They so, can't reach it. So they fly with it. They fly with it. Yeah. And then they, they what what's happening is, is there's communication. JF, first of all, JFK... You know, they told JFK, and he was out for a swim that day, and he was just fucking probably like— Probably banging some hookers. Probably banging some hookers. He swam twice a day because of his back problems. So when they told him, they thought he was going to go wild, and he was like, ah, whatever, like, you know, shit happens. So JFK is not really helping. He's yeah. like, I, I don't know, like, just figure it out. So nobody understands, though, that all this stuff is happening, you know, obviously right in the middle of the crisis of this Cold War. Everybody is, like I said, is armed to the teeth with nuclear weapons. So— Normally, with a nuclear weapon, you know, uh, the president of the United States or the, or the prime minister, president of Russia, has to give – there's all these orders that people need to follow. But you got to understand, these Russian and U.S. jets now are all flying up. They All they have to do is press one button, yeah. and they can launch nukes. Yeah. And they're both <laughs> – if they're programmed as pilots on both sides, the Russian and the American side. If we come in contact with the enemy, we fire our fucking missiles, which happen to be nuclear fucking bombs. Yeah. So no – Nobody understands that but the pilots all facing off at the top of the fucking sky. <laughs> fucking wild. Wild. It is crazy. And the only reason why the Americans at the bases up there knew where this pilot was. Yeah. Was because they were picking up. They had hacked the system of the Russians. Yes. And they the Russians had found the fucking plane. Yeah. And so they were they were doing intel and they kept that a secret because they didn't want the Russians to know that they hacked their communications. Exactly. So they were they were fucking using the Russian communications. They were using espionage to listen to the Russians who were talking about the plane. So they knew that the Russians thought that maybe this was an act of war. So yeah. they are fucking nervous Love it. and they're trying to guide this fucking guy yeah. out of Russian territory. Yeah. And he's going, yo. There's Russian MiGs below me. And we go, yeah, look. And they pulled out a fucking atlas. Yeah. Like Chrissy said, there's no GPS. You, you don't understand how fucked this is. Like, there's no button. The the guy the guy in the plane, who you know, the American in the plane, uh, uh, Charlie Boy, who was 70,000 feet in the air, said I knew that there, he said he knew that there was a problem when he started getting radio transmissions of Russian music. He was like, uh-oh, <laughs> I think I made a wrong turn yeah. somewhere. Yeah, that's what he figured it yeah, out. Yeah, it was like the, all he heard was fucking Russian ballet music. <laughs> <laughs> 70,000 feet in the air. He's like, this is a problem. Yeah, he picked yeah. up some Russian transmission. Yeah. 
So he's 300 miles into Russian territory. So what happens then yo, is— but, well, Yo, how dope was it that the Russians made contact with the plane? Yeah. And remember, they kept trying to trick him? Yeah. They kept trying to yeah. trick him. They had some guy who spoke English who without spoke English an English with no accent. With, with no yeah. accent. And he was saying, oh, turn 35 degrees to the east because yeah. they wanted to fucking get him and capture him and look at all his intel. But yeah. then he had to, this guy basically had to turn off his— He had to turn off his radio. Yeah. This is how sick this—what happened. So the guy then—now the guy's flying for nine hours. He's only got nine hours and 20 minutes worth of fuel. So he has to turn off his engines and his radio and communication and just say fuck it and trust his gut. Yeah. And then he finally sees the certain star yeah. that he needs. So he turns and then he turns off his engine and the plane is designed to glide for another 250 miles. So he hits his fucking he hits his suit. Yeah. It's a suit that, like, you know, uh, uh, that blows Protects up like the vessels. Michelin Man. Yeah. There's vessels, and he forgets that there's a sec separate button that he has to push that also inflates his helmet. He forgot to inflate his helmet, so now he's just got the suit all puffed up, <laughs> and the helmet is up, uh, is covering his eyes. He can't see his fucking control panel <laughs> or the stars. He doesn't know where the fuck he's going. And he also looked like Beetlejuice because his body looked big like me. I got a small head. Yeah, you got a small head. So this guy's got the small fucking head. And then finally, um, he tur once he turns the engines back on, uh, however, you know, he just trusted his gut. He glided for a while. Glided for a while. He hears Americans talking to him, and he yeah. knows he's back. And he starts to hear some, probably heard some fucking Elvis Presley. <laughs> what do you hear? He heard some fucking Johnny B. Good. Yeah. He heard some music, and he yeah. knew he's back, in the good, he's back on the safe side. He's yeah. back with the good guys. Yeah. The good old USA. And then he glides down finally, yeah. and he glides into a snowbank yeah. on American territory. And he was there. got picked up by the U.S. And he fucking lived. Now, can you imagine this guy's up there? He's getting chased by, by Russian MiGs. Who have uh, uh, armed with nukes? He's trying. They, they're trying to trick him, telling him what to do. At first, he was listening to those guys, and then he was because he was talking to like both of them at the same time. It was like these are different dudes. Yeah. But uh, and then he just figured he was smart enough to realize like one of these people are trying to trick me, and he listened to the American guy because they had some code words that only that dude, only Americans would know. Yeah. So he figured out. He stopped. He turned that channel off. Listen, to that dude. The people who were guiding him in. The people who were guiding him in. We're using fucking Atlas in the Patreon. Yeah. The Patreon. Yo, they were using an Atlas, remember? Yeah. They opened up maps. Yes. And they were trying to tell him where these yeah. stars were. Yeah. And like we're trying to figure out where he was. Because yeah. they could not figure out where yeah. he was to guide him in. Yeah, like fucking Ernest Family Vacation. Cause if it's this wild. fucking plane gets shot down by the Russians or crashes in Russia. We could have had an all-out nuclear war. 1,000% we would have been nuked to the fucking gills. Thankfully, this guy crashes into a snowbank, lands the plane. Yeah. He lives. This event was classified for many, 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 many fucking years. Yep. The Cold War ends. Thank God. Um, uh, and it ends with, um, you know, the Russians and the Americans making a deal that uh, Russian Russia agrees that it'll take its nukes out of Cuba. And America agrees that it'll take its nukes out of Turkey and I think Italy. Am I correct on that? Yep, yeah. Yeah. Italy and Turkey. So yep. they'll remove those nukes. They'll remove these nukes. And it was fucking solved thanks to some good old back channel negotiations. And the world was saved. John F. Kennedy does not get enough credit for him and his brother, really, when you look back at history, really deserve the credit for really under pressure in those 13 days, the Cuba Missing Crisis, the, the, the world has never gotten closer to becoming, for humanity, history. Is there a good Netflix doc that we can all watch about I the mean, Cuban Missile Crisis? There you should read be books because you're a cuck. Yeah, I mean, there's a good book called, um, uh, I think it's the Cuban Missile Crisis. I mean, when you look at these back-channel letters, like the letters that they were writing each other and the negotiations, the, the real good book is, is The Crisis Years. That really knocks it down. And another book, if you want to read about Kennedy, we'll do, we'll do another episode about John F. Kennedy uh, based on Seymour Hersh's book called The Dark Side of Camelot because John F. Kennedy was the definition of fucking wild. I mean, this guy, he was one of the biggest pimps of all time. He Absolutely. was fucking everybody. When I said he was fucking a hooker before, I wasn't joking. This guy used to have hooker pool parties at the White House when, when Jackie was out of town. Yeah. He would have pool parties. And it was back in the day where the press wouldn't rat on him, cuz. No, you wouldn't rat on him. Nah. I mean, you know, it's, it's when fucking kind of... I kind of like that world is a little bit better. I'd rather go back to that. Everyone's a goddamn rat now. Yeah, and, everyone yeah. rats out. Everyone wants to get fucking, you know, the scoop on this, the scoop on that. Yeah. I mean, you know, in our community, you know, like we know, like even like, you know, in the comedy community, like Pete Davidson and Ariana Grande, everyone's the hot off the press. You know, we have our friends, no Pete. They're fucking offering, 
you know, our friends thousands of dollars to get pictures of a ring. It's like, why don't you let these kids just fucking do what they want in peace? Yeah, let them you're kid- fucking, if Listen to me. If you're out there and you want to be a fucking, like, in the paparazzi, what are you doing? Yeah. The, if you want to be in the paparazzi or be a traffic cop, you're a dirtbag. Yeah. Okay? Because there's a thousand other jobs that you could do. Don't tell me it's your only fucking job and it's the, how you make an income. You make an income that way because you want to ruin people's fucking days and you're a scumbag. Except for you're, Adam Glynn. He's a good kid. Adam Glynn's a good kid. <laughs> Adam Glenn's a good kid. Yeah, Adam Glenn's a good kid. I will give you that. Adam Adam Glenn Glenn is a good kid. I do like Adam Glenn. But he's probably the only one. Yeah, there's exceptions to every rule. But let those kids, let fucking Pete Davidson and Ariane, you know. Let them do it up. Have their two-month love relationship. Whatever. Let them do it up. You know what I mean? But it's like this fucking society, man. It's like, oh, God. I don't give a fuck. No. You want to report on fucking shit, you know, on some presidential shit? Or you want to report on, you know, violence, police violence? I'll fucking read that. But come on, this other shit? I don't want to. What? Because speaking to of ruin the, people's lives to make these. some to make some money. Fuck that. We got to crush these cucks. There's all that's because the only way is to bring back the consequences. <laughs> no, you can't. You, we can't go back to Henry VIII, Chrissy. It would make a fucking world of we difference. Can't. We can't do it. You just start fucking setting up some guillotines. No, cuz. Come on, cuz we set up, cuz. How about this? For every fucking, you know, organic coffee shop we 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 set up, we also set up a guillotine right I next like door. I like organic coffee, cuz. Yeah, we need to call. <laughs> yeah, no. cause you're a fucking, you're a cuck, a, a bad. Yeah, when you fucking posted the picture yesterday on Father's Day, you said I'm a dog daddy. I want to go over there and fucking cut your head off. You wanted to get that steel pipe. Yeah, Yo, steel pipe Chrissy is your new fucking yeah, nickname. Yo, yeah, cause you conceal steel pipe Chrissy, yeah. but you're a kid from fucking Ridgewood. That's what it is. You're, deep down, you're a kid from yeah. Ridgewood. I'm a kid you from try Ridgewood. to control it. Yeah, it's what it is. The bottom line is I can't fucking handle it. If yeah. you tell me that you're a parent because you have a pet, I can't fucking you handle, can't handle it. it. Yeah. It's you're living in a world where it's not fucking real. Yo, steel pipe Chrissy. Steel pipe Chrissy. Yo, D. that's gonna happen. On, when you steel go wild, Chrissy. I'm gonna go steel. Pipe Chrissy, cause SPC, cause he's on a fucking city yep. bike. Guess what he has in his right hand? Down below, you don't even see it. Steel fucking pipe. That's what it is. That's what it is. Consequences. Cause all this talk of fucking violence is making me want to see a goddamn fucking nature video. So let's go <laughs> to our nature video of the week. Okay. Right, this video is a fight between two animals who don't often fight. They don't often do this. Not very often. This is a rare video, right? Okay, so here we have two giraffes. You never would think that giraffes, before you before you play it, I would think giraffes are two of the most beautiful. When you think of giraffes, you think of beautiful animals, um, just very majestic. They always have those hotels where the giraffes eat through the windows. Yeah. But then look at this. Two giraffes, two male giraffes. Big motherfuckers. Look at that. Big, long neck. Now this are two male giraffes fighting for the right to mate with some hot puss. Oh, my God. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, wow. They they use their neck. This is called necking, where the giraffes take turns taking violent swings with their neck and hitting the other one in the fucking face. Oh, my God. <laughs> and hit him in the neck. Yo, you know those slap boxing fights that used to happen? Remember those where two dudes would stand there and slap each other until one of them gets knocked out? Bro, the what, you see the way they're getting hit in the throat? Yeah. And what is this for? To, to bang a chip? Yeah, yeah. And dominance. Oh God, yo, dude, the one, dude. This would crush every bone in your body. The power and force from. I that, don't understand how they're not decapitating each other. Because they're so. Oh, <laughs> you guys gotta watch this you video when we post it. Hear bones cracking. Yeah, you can hear it. Oh, oh he missed. Oh, and they also have these horns. So I think they're hitting. A, look, and they look real peaceful while they're doing it because they can't talk or scream because they're dumb giraffes. Yeah, let me hear one more. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my God, yeah. that's got to hurt. One of them's going down. One I of them's going down. We have a few down. seconds left. One of them's got to go down. Giraffes are beautiful animals. Yeah, they so. are beautiful. They got weird necks, though. Yeah, I mean, they got big necks. Yo, but a giraffe's neck and its kicks are... A, a kick kills a lion immediately. A kick from a giraffe. They trip. Wow, you see them oh! missing each other? And he's down goes Frazier! Down goes, goes Frazier! Well, oh! no, I think he just missed and he fell. I think he broke his own neck. No, nah, because that was a knockout. No, he missed. No, go back. Go look, back. Look, he missed. He, nah, he, that was... the, look, the kid missed. He doesn't hit him. He oh, missed. Yeah. <laughs> the kid just missed and fell down. <laughs> he fell down. But, yo, the other one claims victory. He's like, that's good enough. Yeah, you're right. He missed. Yeah, kid but missed. But, yo, he might have missed because he was so weird. He was so woozy from the last blow. I think he actually broke his own neck with a miss. <laughs> he might. Yo, how fucking wild was that? Yo, we live in a fucking wild world, cuz. Yeah. But see, but that, but that's reality. That's nature. That's nature. Giraffes will break their own necks just to have dominance. Look, okay? We're trying to tell you, kids. You know? I applaud you for trying to make the world a better place. But look, 
The world is always going to be full of violence and negative things. This is not a utopia. So, yes, try to make the world a better place, but also be vigilant. Yeah. You know, be, you know, be aware, you know, just protect yourself. It, it's not, there's always going to be evil people, crazy people. There's always going to be inevitable violence, misunderstandings. It is you know, what it is, guys. Masculinity, that's in us. It's in all animals. Guys fight when they're younger. It's what yeah. they do. Now that I'm, you know, now that I'm the age that I'm a, I, I, you know, it's not in me anymore, but that's, that's, it is what it is. Women fight too. Women yeah. fight too. Everyone yeah. fights. It happens. I'm sorry, guys. It's a natural thing. It's what it is. It is These what it is. These two beautiful giraffes. I mean, what's the name of that video so we can tell the folks they could check it out? It's literally just called Giraffe Fight. Giraffe Fight. There you go. Yeah. So if you, instead, if you, if you get sick of watching uh, Street Fight videos, go watch some Giraffe Fights. Giraffe Fights. That's it. Yeah. But yo, listen, guys. We appreciate everybody listening. Um, We do this every... We do this uh, uh, every episode. We read the the lovely people who have joined, who have joined the matriarch and went on patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys and become members of our cuz community. So here's today's members. New members of the here's week. Here's the new members of the week. We got Stephen Toth. Stephen Toth? Toth. He sounds like he's from Britain. Stephen Tater Toth. Hello, Toth. We got, uh-oh, this is one of my girls, Lindsay Palessi. Lindsay Pelosi, how you doing? You make uh, yo, uh, ma. We oh wait, a- no, that's not her name. It's uh. Lindsay Plosel. Oh, Lindsay Plosel. So she doesn't have a Sunday sauce. No, she doesn't have a Sunday what sauce. What kind of name is that? Lindsay Plosel. Yeah, L- maybe it's German. Plosel. Plosel. All right. Sal Baker. Oh, Sal. We got Sal- some wasps. Well, Sal, but Sal's. I think he, his mom was probably, or his dad was probably a gindaloon. Yeah. And then his, his dad, and then it, no, my, the dad was a dad, wasp. Dad was a wasp. Baker. Mom was a gindaloon. Yeah. yeah. Half wasp, half gindaloon. Then we got this kid, Petey Defada. Yo, Petey Defada. Yo, 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 ma. ma. It's dinner ready. Ma. Ma. Then we got Pete Bill Cartwright. Pete Bill Cartwright? Well, his name's Pete Cartwright, but I just put a bill in front there of him. There you it. go. Pete Bill Cartwright, Pete Cartwright. And then, again, I mean, this kid is out of his fucking mind. He just he just signs up and then un, and then, and then then does... He signs up and then deactivates account and then signs up again. Fucking Max Ostrowski. Max Ostrowski? Again! Yo, you're the fucking wild. The kid just wild. keeps signing up and, and unfriending us and then friending us again. And that's the kid who recommended we talk about the Haitian Revolution, which was fucking wild. Yeah. So there so it is. Thank you so much, guys, for your guys' continued support. Um, check us out at Bay Ridge Boys on Instagram, um, at Christy Comedy on Instagram, at Giannis Pappas on Instagram. We're going to be coming out with some new Bay Ridge Boys episodes pretty soon. Absolutely. And uh, we got some merch coming out. And uh, I think we got a lock on somebody sending us a hyena pseudo penis cake. Oh, talk about the poster we got. Oh, thank you. So, what well, I, I I got I I forgot the uh, their 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 social media handle. So the next episode, I'm gonna get that poster out. And we're gonna put it up on Instagram and we're gonna shout you out on the podcast. But I just forgot to be going through some things. Yeah, a fan. Uh, thank you very much, whoever you are who sent us a Bay Ridge Boys poster. Um, thank you so much. Um, and you can send us stuff at where, guys? Uh, one seventeen Mc. Dougal Street, uh, Comedy Cellar, right? Attention, History Hyenas. On yeah. You want to send us anything, all right? Yeah. So, yeah, so also this Patreon episode, we're going to be talking uh, the Patreon episode that comes up next for our Patreon members only. Um, go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys, and you can hear the next part of the ep. Um, we're going to be talking about my car accident and an update on the Rafael DeLuca Jen Bacacus situation. Cuck, 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 cute. Cuck, 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 cute. All right, out. Oh, oh, oh. Ha, 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 ha